Hello, fellow people of Google. It is I, Axa, here today to bring you another fun DIY video. Obviously, we're staying in. Now, obviously, we are staying with the holiday spirit for this video as well. So I'm going to be making some lovely Grinch-inspired heels, complete with little puffy toe pom-poms. Can't wait to show you how I make them. First, you're going to need your shoes that you're going to cover. And then we have here a fluffy boa that we're going to use to make the little toe puffs. Some green um, flocking powder to give them that kind of velvety texture. We use our handy dandy Mod Podge and an applicator. Okie doke, so to get started with the flocking, first we're going to put some of our Mod Podge on the shoe and then just kind of spread it around and evenly coat the area that you want to cover. Um, I recommend starting in kind of small sections just because it does start to dry a little bit quickly. And you will notice I'm using a paintbrush right now, um, and I do switch to the sponge applicator later. I found that the sponge was so much easier because it was a wider section. So once you have it applied evenly um, and a little bit thickly, uh, then you can go ahead and just put your flocking powder onto the shoe. Just kind of, you know, tap and spread it around, and then just kind of pressing it into place so that way I can make sure as much flocking powder sticks to um, the Mod Podge as possible. So we're going to do that and then add a little bit more to fill in kind of these little iffy white spots. Um, and don't be alarmed that the Mod Podge does look white right now because it will dry clear if you are using the regular Mod Podge um, like that red bottle I showed in the beginning section. So go ahead and tap that down, make sure it's about as even as you want, and then just kind of tap off a little bit of the extra. So I kind of worked in sections and let a section dry so that way I could hold the shoe there to fill in the other sections. Um, so here I am just continuing my way around the shoe to cover the whole thing with the flocking powder. And here is the sponge applicator, which I do believe worked so much better um, just because of the volume of surface area I was working with. It was a lot nicer than using a small paintbrush. So again, we are tapping into place, um, kind of making sure that the seams are blended out between the sections I've worked on, and you are good to go. And do make sure that you're doing this over a piece of paper or a box lid or something that you can kind of shake the excess flocking powder and get it back into the jar with, um, because you obviously will have a lot of wasted powder from this. So here's what the shoes kind of look like after one coat. As you can see, it's pretty darn uneven and you can still see the silver coming through, which for the record, I would recommend paint the shoes the color you want first. Um, it will save you from having to do like a third and fourth coat of the powder. So I should have painted them green, but I didn't. So here we are. Anyway, I'm going to do my second coat now. So I'm just putting the it on top the same way I did before and just kind of spreading it around. Obviously it doesn't spread as easily because it's going on top of the textured um, flocking surface. So you do have to be kind of careful and take your time and just, you know, spread and work it around. Um, yeah, until you kind of cover the area that needs a little more powder and then just do the same process and shake your powder on and yeah. Do a few coats until you get the desired uh, thickness and like even um, coating that you want. Again, please paint the shoes the color of your flocking powder first or buy shoes that already are that color. It will save you a lot of time from doing a third and fourth coat of flocking powder on the shoes, which is what I ended up having to do for these guys. So here you can kind of see what it looks like um, with the second coat. It is a little bit thinner of a coat because obviously it's going on top of powder already and there are some little spots and gaps, but you know that's totally okay um, because you are putting a textured surface onto it. So once it dries with a few coats, it should look something like this and then you can go ahead and make your toe puffs.
All right, so since I am using a boa, I am going to end up having it kind of uh, circled around so it makes a little puffy ball shape, as you can see here, just, you know, showing you. Make a little puffy ball shape um, to figure out how long of a piece you are going to need. So then we are going to take our handy dandy um, thread. I just have happen to have a dark green color, but honestly, you're not really going to see it, so you can probably do any color thread. And I just tied it around one end of um, the little guy and then uh, the boa thing and then just pulled the little extra fluffs out that got kind of trapped under it so it was even and just has this string sticking out of it um, and then did another one on next to it uh, where the other side of um, the length of piece you wanted and then cut them and voila you end up with a little monster guy like that. So before we can attach the puffs, we are going to need to poke some holes in our shoes so that way we can run those threads through. I'm using an awl for um, leather working, but you could use a needle or, I don't know, probably the edge of a scissor or something even, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, just poke some holes. Um, so I did four holes on each shoe, two kind of in the middle where I'm going to actually attach the puffs to, and then two kind of on the back end, um, which is where I'm going to run the thread out of um, so that way I can tighten it and tie a knot easily. So one, two, three, four. You don't have to be super precise with this um, because they are big and kind of fluffy so you're never going to tell if they're not exactly in the same spot on the two shoes. So then we're going to thread our needle um, with one side of my little toe puff strings hanging off of it and go in the holes in the middle of the shoe on one side. Um, and I did find using a pair of pliers was kind of helpful to grab the needle to pull it out because it is a bit of a tight space to stick your fingers in. Um, yeah, so recommend some tweezers or pliers or something. And then we're going to go back through um, the hole from the inside to the outside of the one that's right next to the edge of the shoe. It is a little bit difficult sometimes to kind of thread the needle when you can't see where it's going, um, so be patient. But anyway, now you have one side kind of strung up and ready to tighten and tie down. So we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. So here I am just threading my needle. Look at that, I did that so fast. Anyway, going in the other hole in the middle of the shoe, again, just the same process using my little, uh, pliers there to help me grab it and um, pull the needle out of the shoe and then we're going to go back in that hole right next to the edge of the shoe. Now if you do have puffs that aren't quite as fluffy as mine then I would recommend making your second set of holes closer to the first set of holes um, but since my puffs are very fluffy and will cover uh, where I tie this knot on the front there then it's totally fine where I put the holes. So here you can see we have four holes, we have strings going in and strings coming out. So now we can go ahead and pull our strings and tighten them. See, look how cute that is. It's like playing with a little monster, just dancing, it's having fun. Anyway, you're going to pull those as tight as you can and then tie a couple knots to hold it in place and you have one shoe done after that. Uh, be careful, don't pull too tightly um, because it is embroidery thread and you might accidentally tear it like I just did. But, you know, still worked. So here we are. Ta-da! I feel so grinchy. These puffs on the toes are so freaking cute. Oh my goodness. I don't think I've ever felt this much holiday spirit ever in my life. Oh my goodness. The Grinch is laying on the floor. You know, I understand why Amber lays on the floor when she records videos of shoes. She's kind of fun. Honestly, a bit of an aesthetic. I'm into it. Am I the Grinch? Am I from Whoville? Honestly, who knows? But, I will say, these shoes are freaking adorable. I love the little puffs on the toes. And wearing them with socks is honestly such a holiday aesthetic. I think I'm going to wear socks with heels every Christmas from now on. Honestly, these didn't take very long to make at all, and it was super duper easy. So if you need some funky, fluffy heels to go with your ugly Christmas sweater this year, then I would highly suggest trying it out on your I hope you guys had as much fun watching me make these 
crazy grinch heels as I had fun making them and editing the video for you. As always, please like and subscribe to my channel for some more fun, funky DIY content. And I will be making my very own pair of leather heels coming soon. I am actively working on them, so those videos will be up shortly and you do not want to miss them. So on that note, stay festive, happy crafting, and I hope your day is as beautiful as you are.